Welcome back to the show, and uh, we're here at the ICRS St. Louis. Second day on the end of the end of the thing, and I'm like, oh, I'm getting tired, <laughs> but we're gonna make it. We got a few more to go. We're gonna be there. Have Mr. Cecil Murphy, very well respected written author here. Very nice to see you. I was telling him that I just appreciate the last time he was on the radio show. Uh, I, you know, I was having one of those days, and I opened up my mailbox and. There's a thank you note from this man, and it just made me feel like, you know what, I'm doing this and, and getting things running, and this guy appreciates it. And that really made me feel really wonderful. He had so much kind words to put it. He's definitely a gifted writer, that's for sure. But he shares his heart, and we appreciate that. Thank and I just you. want to tell him thank you on the air so you can see him. And see, this is the man. That's, how many books have you written? Uh, 135. 135. That is a lot of books. And it just shows you that and if they keep churning them out, there's a lot of stories in them. There's a lot of character in them. Um, so and, and like anything, if, if people are if there's still a demand and, and for that many books, there's a lot of good content in them. So that's a that's a high compliment. And anyway, we're gonna talk about his book, A Night Quite Not Quite Healed, and then we're also gonna talk about a book that we that it's I believe in healing. You see the image right now, and we're gonna talk about that book in a few minutes as well. So tell us about the book, Not Quite Healed. Well, uh, David, I'm a I'm a survivor of childhood male sexual abuse. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was abused by a female relative when I was quite young. Uh, I don't know when it started, but probably up to about three, maybe four years old. Uh, then later, somewhere after, I know I was at least five years old, somewhere between five and eight, uh, uh, we rented a room to a man who sexually assaulted me and an older sister mm -hmm. uh, who is slightly retarded. And uh, my sister told on him, and I, you know, I never did. I never talked about it, and uh, I never dealt with my abuse. I, I'm, and I'm a typical male in that mm -hmm. regard. Uh, men just don't talk about it. Uh, and part of that also is my father was a functional alcoholic, and that is, he never missed a day of work, but he rarely missed a weekend being drunk. So that's mm. how he was. And he used to beat me quite a bit, and I remember at about age 11, I just decided he would never see me cry again. The problem with that is that you, if you shut off any, one kind of emotion, you shut off all your emotions. Yeah. Anyway, I was, uh, I'm a runner, and I was like, 50, I think I was 51 years old, I was running. No memory, uh, by the way, I had no memories of any of this childhood then. Okay. But I was running one day, and I usually run like six miles. And that day I ran 12 or 13 miles, something like that. Wow. Well, That's good. But on the way home, the last mile or so, I just burst into tears. And I, that frightened me because I hadn't cried. So what does that mean? And I could hardly make it home. My wife was at work. But the mem it wasn't just the tears. The memory started coming back, and I remembered the old man. And I remembered the female well, just little s snippets of it. And over the next two years, just every few days, another memory would come back. I never got all the memories back, but enough. So I really dealt with my uh, abuse. My, my wife was really wonderful. She was a cradle Christian. I'm an adult convert. My wife just doesn't know what, didn't know what it was like not to know the Lord. So when I told her about it, she was just so supportive. She didn't understand it, but she said, I love you and I'm mm. with you. I called my best friend. He came over. He wisely didn't even say anything much. He just said, let me hug you. And he just let me cry on his shoulder. I mean, and I cried and I cried and I cried. And when I finally stopped, he said, are you okay now? Are you better now? And I said, well, a little. He said, do you want me to stay? Do you want to talk? What do you want? I said, no, I'm okay now to, to be alone. And so he left. So that's the kind of friend. Not many people have that kind of friend. He yeah, didn't try to fix that's, me. That's very true. That's good. Yeah, he was here for me if I needed him. So uh, as I began to deal with my abuse, more and more things happened. And, fi and I am a writer. So finally, I decided I was going to write a couple of articles about abuse. And I sent them to two different magazines, two different articles. Both were published, got a lot of response from readers, so I thought, well, now it's the time to write a book. Uh, and I published almost everything I write, uh, and I couldn't get a publisher to buy it. This was like six years, or six to eight years, I've forgotten now, mm -hmm. before I finally got a publisher who was Quinkle, was willing to take a chance. So my first book was called When a Man You Love Was Abused. Okay. Now this, uh, not quite here, this is a follow-up book called, uh, well, not quite healed, because the point I was trying to make in the first book is trying to help people understand those of us who are abused mm -hmm. and help us understand ourselves. At the end of that book I said, you know, I'm almost healed, 
but not quite. So this is kind of a carry-on with this. Okay. I also asked a fellow named Gary Rowe to help me. Um, Gary had just recently uh, began to deal with his uh, 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 abuse. See, I'd been dealing with this like 20 years before I wrote this, and uh, uh, the first book. So, you know, so much healing had gone on. I remembered many things, but I didn't remember all the emotions. Yeah. Because God healed that. So I wanted somebody to come and work with me who still had these memories really fresh. Okay. Okay. Amen. And so how long has this book been out? Uh, just a couple of months. Not quite healed. And this this book is, how, how many books in this in this type of top, topic, oh man, that you have? This is only the second book. And yeah, I, uh, I write in a lot of different genres. I do. Uh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I, I do uh, gift books, uh, you know, like one's called When Some You Love But No Longer Remembers, another's called Some You Love uh, Has Cancer. So I write, uh, I do books on Christian living, but uh, primarily I'm known as a ghost writer, okay. or collaborator. I, I wrote 90 Minutes in Heaven, and if you know the book, um, Gifted Hands, the Ben Carson book, I wrote that. So that's, that's really, probably that's how I make my money. Amen. Well, that's good to make money in writing. Uh, not many authors can even say that. So well, that's good. Well, actually, statistically, there are only about 2% of us that make a living. Wow. That, that's amazing. Tell us about your new book, I Believe in Healing. Well, uh, my wife had a healing experience a number of years ago. Uh, we came from a Baptist church, and they didn't believe in healing. And I'm not putting Baptist down. You know, okay. just have to be that true. And... Um, my wife, um, we were involved in a head-on collision. They told me that she would not live through the night. So they said, you could stay in the ER with her until she expires. Mm. That was the word they used, I remember, until she expires. Anyway, uh, and I called my folks, my, my friends and people, and um, they prayed. And um, my man said God told him that he was going to heal my wife, that she was going to be okay. So I was there two, two or three days, and I had two very young children. I had to make provisions for them, so I got a ride back to my home. We lived in the north side of Chicago, and uh, got there. And so I got there, and I called the doctor, and I said, it was the news, because there had been absolutely no change. He was yeah. in, a, in a coma. And he said, well, I'll tell you this. If you come tomorrow, you can take her home. She's all right. And I said, <laughs> what do you mean, all right? He said, well, she, she's able to walk. She's lost blood, so she's a little weak. So, in effect, I said, you mean she's been healed? He said, well, that's, you yeah, know, that's, yeah. He would say, yeah. <laughs> and then he just said, there's some things we don't explain. Amen. And I thought that was a nice way of doing it. So, mm -hmm. for 25 years, my wife had absolutely no pain. Amen. And she was supposed to have died. Mm. So that was the beginning of that. And I was telling an editor about this, and he said, uh, we're, this is a, uh, company called Rigo, which is okay. Gospel Light. And he said, well, we've been wanting to do a book about healing. And, and so he asked me if I would do one. And I said, well, on one condition. They wanted a lot of stories. And I said, the only way I would do it is if I also can tell the biblical, theological, and historical accounts of this. See, a lot of, most people tend to believe that all miracles stopped at the end of the first century. Mm. And I can prove historically that they've continued on, not as always in large numbers, but have continued all through history, uh, from the time of St. Augustine to uh, Martin Luther, uh, Calvin Spurgeon. Mm -hmm. So uh, they said, yeah, we'd like that. So I did a book called I Believe in Healing. Mm. Amen, amen. Tell everybody how they can get your books. Well, uh, any any bookstore, any Christian bookstore, christianbooks.com, amazon.com, uh, you know, they're, they're easily gotten. Just Google my name, Cecil Murphy. Amen, amen. Thank you so much for being on the show. Oh, thank you for having me. Amen, the okay. time goes quick. <laughs> yes, thank you. And we'll be back with another great guest.